is our pleasure today to be of service in the following languages. English, French, Spanish, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the last thing we expected was to find fans at the airport. I mean, it's not like we're Justin Timberlake or anything like that. <laughs> Listen, we're musicians. It's not really that noble a pursuit. Uh, and if you can do something that touches someone like that, it's pretty mind-boggling to me. So I had actually arrived separately from the other guys uh, coming in from California and they're coming in from Toronto. And um, thus I was able to avoid all the hoopla, which is fine for me. Um, and we came into it all kind of open-minded, expecting anything, not knowing what might happen technically, what the circumstances of the concerts might be, or even how big the audiences might be. But it was the last three shows of the tour, and we had deliberately chosen to end on a kind of um, risky but exciting way. Hey. Uh, at the time of finishing uh, Vapor Trails, we were kind of debating whether or not to tour, but decided, yeah, we'd do it one more time. And started, uh, I guess, about April of 2002, I started rehearsing my parts in a warehouse in Toronto, and then gradually the guys came together and we started um, lubricating the machine and gearing it up again for the long haul. And uh, consequently, though, we were so well prepared and the production around us was so re well rehearsed that even the first show went really well. And I remember the three of us just ex exchanging a look on stage of, of the triumph of having survived the last five years and everything that it took to bring us to that show. I think you do get tired of playing certain songs over the course of a tour, especially songs that you've played for decades. But this tour, I never got tired of any, any songs that we played. I, I didn't have a song that was on my, you know, B list of songs to play that night. I just seemed to get off on the whole thing every night. It was just immediately rewarding to see the audiences, um, the whole issue of not taking it for granted, which uh, I think you can easily do in something like this. I just looked at it like this might be the last time I ever played these songs. So, and, and it probably isn't, but I think you have to look at all of life like that. To create a set list is one of the toughest things. And what we do is we start with, well, what did we do last time? What did we play? What songs did we play? What songs didn't we play? And then we put a wish list together of what songs would we like to pull back out of the past that we haven't played in some time. And we start emailing potential set lists to each other. Uh, and that's how it starts. And of course, you know, there's always pressure from fans. Then Alex and I got together at my house and we started listening through to all these records. Like we kind of went through every record going back in time. I mean, we hadn't done that in a, maybe ever. <laughs> and we sat in my kitchen, played everything back over my computer and uh, it was kind of fun. We were laughing a lot. You know, some songs came back and we went, wow, it really sounds good. And some songs came back and was like, there's no way I can ever play that song again. I'm sorry. I don't care how much the fans want it. I apologize, but there's no way I can play it. And so that's how it starts. And the first set list is about four and a half hours long. And then you just start playing it. And sometimes a song that you think will never work, once you play it, you go, that sounds really good. What was I thinking? We should definitely play this. 
and Neil had some hesitation about certain old songs. And then once we played them, there was so much spirit, and we were smiling so much that it was like, well, yeah, let's do it. Are you kidding? I, we got into bed and I'm like rubbing her. I'm going, I love you, honey. I love you. And she's like, shut up. Shut up. I'm trying to sleep. Shut up. My wife, uh, Charlene, came out to um, a lot of gigs on this tour, m more than, uh, than she ever has. And uh, we had a lot of fun together. Now something's going. Don't. I need makeup. <laughs> you need more than that, honey. Ow! Even she's yelling at me. <laughs> she always, I get stuck. Now I'm, she's hitting. Lady, don't make with the hitting. Please, lady, don't, don't. <laughs> I'm wandering around my room, like, going, where am I? I think I must be in the blah, 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 blah. blah. And then I threw up. So my limit is supposed to be 20 grams of carbohydrates a day. I hit about 1,200 last night. I woke up. I woke up and I'm like the fattest person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> I concur. I got dressed and, and Chuck's like, oh, you look like a magician. You spin around, jumping around like a magician. So I'm still pretty agile for a big bloated fat guy. Sharon. How can there's so many eggs? I don't drink coffee. I don't drink or coffee smoke cigarettes. or smoke cigarettes. That's the truth. I quit smoking a year ago. It's secondhand smoke that I'm worried about. <laughs> My second hand, it always has a cigarette in it. How long are your interviews? Oh, uh, weeks. Like three hours? Um, no. I think we have a photo shoot for ten minutes. It's like, uh, you know, paparazzi. And you go, you stand like this. Like Steven Seagal? Yeah. <laughs> I learned from Steven Seagal. <laughs> Got my hat on. I'm ready to go do the interview. You should now. Go down. All right, I will. This is Renata for the Lady. Oh, hi. 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 Such a pleasure to meet you guys. Welcome to Brazil. You're going to be have a wonderful time here. We're really anxious. Sure we will. So long, like, waiting for you to come down. Well, we were just upstairs. Hello, we were waiting, waiting for you to come oh, down to yeah. Brazil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. Nice to meet you. Welcome. This is the Brazilian press. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you got one. Here's your pen. Here's your pen. Okay, we have to go. Prazer temos Alex Lifeson in Getty Lee. Gary, baixista, vocalista, e Alex. Olá, bom dia. Gostaria de saber por que o Rush de Bolitão quer vir ao Brasil. Uh, why did it take you so long to come, to finally come to Brazil? It took us so long to come here because we're not very smart. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't realize we had so many fans in Brazil, quite frankly. Where is Neil? Why isn't he here with, with you? Before we started this tour, we had to discuss how we were going to handle press. And because of the events in Neil's life and what had gone on, we knew there was going to be a lot of interest in what had happened and how he's doing. You know, most of it, I believe, comes from a good place, but some of it is just pure curiosity. And uh, so we talked about it. And